In today's video, I will be carrying on the series where I compare the ecosystems of two continents. And the two continents I will be focusing on today are North America and Australia. Because the Australian mainland has been separated from the rest of the world for millions of years, it does have quite a unique ecosystem. It's home to many species that can't be found anywhere else in the world, but it's also proven to be very vulnerable to invaders. Australia has had massive problems with invasive species, but in today's video the Australian animals are going to become the invaders. I will be looking at three Australian animals that I think would do well in North America, but as Australia is a relatively warm country, I will be focusing on Central and South North America. Without further ado, we can start to look at our first species, and I've chosen an animal that I don't think many people would argue with. The saltwater crocodile is the largest living reptile, and males can grow up to a length of 6 meters. These crocodiles are hypercarnivorous apex predators, and they tend to ambush their prey before drowning them or swallowing them whole. They'll prey on pretty much anything in the water or anything that gets too close to the water, and they'll even target other predators such as sharks. Even though they're called saltwater crocodiles, they mostly prefer brackish environments, and they do very well in estuaries and mangroves. Once the saltwater crocodile reaches a certain size, they're pretty much impossible to take down, and man is one of the few creatures that can end their lives. If the young saltwater crocodiles can make it to maturity, they have a very long lifespan, as some of them are able to reach the grand old age of 70 years old. Saltwater crocodiles don't only limit themselves to hunting other animals, as they will even take down their own species and sometimes even humans. It's estimated that around a thousand people are killed by crocodiles globally each year, but the saltwater crocodiles are not the worst offenders. Even though they are the largest and most powerful crocodiles in the world, they do not take down the most humans, as the Nile crocodiles are far more deadly as they come into contact with humans more often. If the saltwater crocodile was introduced into North America, I think it would cause major problems, but it wouldn't be able to survive across the continent. Today it's mostly found in South and Southeast Asia as well as Northern Australia, and these areas have quite a tropical climate. Because it prefers a warmer environment, I think it would only do well in places such as Florida, Mexico and Central America, but these places already have some native crocodilians. Some of the largest crocodilians in North America are the American alligator and the American crocodile, and these two species are both very formidable predators. Some of the largest saltwater crocodiles dwarf the largest American alligators, but it's a different story with the American crocodile. Even though the American crocodiles in Florida are relatively small, it's a different story elsewhere. In Central America, this species grows much larger, and this is mostly due down to having less competition. In these areas, they can reach a very similar maximum size to the saltwater crocodiles, but on average, they are slightly lighter. The presence of these large crocodiles in these ecosystems proves that the saltwater crocodiles could survive here, but they'd have to compete with the American crocodiles. This of course would be an almighty battle, but I think the saltwater crocodile would win, and if not, they could coexist side by side. In Florida, it could be a completely different story as they are much larger than the crocodiles there, but invasive species have already done so much damage in Florida that there may not be enough food for the saltwater crocodile to feed on. Personally, I think this species would find success in North America, but you're free to let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. The next Australian animal we will be taking a look at is the lace monitor. Australia is home to a vast array of monitor lizards, and it was once home to one of the largest lizards that ever lived. The lace monitor is one of the largest monitor lizards in the world with a maximum length of around 2 meters. It's only really dwarfed by the Komodo dragon, and this species was thought to have originally evolved in Australia. Lace monitors are mostly found along the east coast of Australia and they tend to prefer semi-humid forested habitats. In these areas, they feed on pretty much anything they come across, and this includes insects, mammals, reptiles, eggs, and even birds. Not only are they very speedy on the ground, but they're also great at climbing trees. And they also have another secret weapon. Like other monitor lizards, the lace monitor is mildly venomous, and this is just another useful weapon that it uses to take down its prey. 
I think the lace monitor would do very well in North America and specifically the southern states of the US. That's because in recent years a few other lizard species have done very well there, and these lizards are the tegus. There are quite a few different tegu species, and a few of them are invasive in the US. One of these species is the black and white tegu, and this lizard has proven to be very hard to get rid of. If the lace monitor was introduced into North America, I think it would cause similar problems, but personally I think it would be even worse. The lace monitor is more carnivorous than the tegus, and it's also more aggressive and athletic. It would be able to target a wider range of animals and it would be able to take advantage of more ecosystems. But of course it is limited by the climate. It wouldn't be able to make its way to the northern states and Canada, but it could cause problems in the southern states and Central America. Unfortunately, unlike many other animals that I've featured in these videos, this is one of the few introductions that could happen. Monitor lizards are sometimes kept as pets, and if these pets are released into the wild they can cause major problems. This is exactly how the tegu became a problem, and the lace monitor could follow in its footsteps. There really does need to be stricter laws in place to stop this from happening, because if this species got out it would obliterate some of the native wildlife. The final Australian creature we will be taking a look at is the emu. The emu is the second tallest living bird, and it's only second to its relative, the ostrich. This bird is endemic to Australia, and it is Australia's largest native bird. It is the only extant member in its genus, but it is in the same family as the cassowary. For some people, this bird's inclusion on this list may seem quite strange, as it's not a mean apex predator. Even though the emu may seem quite dopey at times, it's far more impressive than it looks, and it's more than capable of handling itself in a difficult situation. Emus can travel great distances, and when they need to, they can sprint up to 48 kilometers per hour. As well as this, they are surprisingly good jumpers, so if you are a predator and you decide to go after an emu, you have to be quite nimble. Strangely, when it comes time to mate, the female emus court the males, and once the eggs are laid, the male will then guard them and he will also guard the chicks. This gives them a better chance at survival, and stops predators from snatching them. Emus have quite a varied diet in the wild, as they'll feed on various plant species as well as insects, spiders and millipedes. This varied diet means that they can survive in a vast array of habitats, and it also allows them to be a very hardy species. If the emu was introduced into North America, I think it could be a success, but of course it would have to deal with a few predators. Cats, canines and crocodilians could take them down, but they do deal with similar predators in their native range. If you are still unsure that the emu would be a success in North America, there is one fact that might sway your opinion. Humans have lost a war against emus. The Great Emu War is a very interesting topic, and there's many great videos on the topic like the one on screen. This war started in around 1932, as there was a concern over the number of emus destroying crops. Eventually the Royal Australian Artillery were brought in with Lewis guns, and although they did kill a large number of these birds, the emu population persisted and continued to cause problems. This just goes to show that even humans have problems controlling these birds, so other animals may struggle too. Really I think people underestimate how impressive these birds are, and I think they could cause problems in quite a few North American ecosystems. Feel free to let me know your thoughts and opinions about this video in the comments down below. But thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you liked it, please leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these, but until next time, goodbye.